Welcome back. This is the week you missed. I had something else to share, but there was breaking news shared 20 minutes ago that I have to talk about now because it kind of, uh, I hate to say it, it pisses me off. What is it? Brittany Griner is free. Did you know that? I know. I'm just saying swap for a Russian arms dealer. Oh my God. This is the guy who's like the merchant of death or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Brittany Griner, seven foot basketball player who won a gold medal and not sure what else she's done other than like score points in games uh has been traded for the merchant of death a guy who was put to jail in the u.s for 25 years for trading arms like bombs and missiles and stuff why does this bother me uh, so basically I'm happy that Brittany Griner is free because I don't think anyone should really be locked up if you didn't do anything that really hurt anyone. Here's the thing though. We're not really talking about United States rules. We're talking about Russian rules. So I don't know if I really have a say on what rules should be, um, held accountable in Russia and what should be ignored or anything like that. But yeah, it's good that she's free. I don't think anyone should be in jail. Here's where I'm a little bit upset though. Paul Whelan, who is a United States citizen, worked uh, was in the army, was working in like private uh, security for a corporation, has been in jail in Russia for four years. He was part of the negotiations at time. Why did Brittany Griner jump over him in the line? Why not trade for Paul Whelan first and then get Brittany Griner after that? Or why not only include Paul Whelan in the negotiation? Why do a one for one? And why do Britney first? To me, what bothers me is we worship these athletes for no reason. Why are we worshiping an athlete over another person? This guy's been in jail for four years over there. So free him. That's my one thing. My other thing is there's 375,000 people in jail right now for nonviolent drug offenses in America. Why don't we change that rule? Why don't we free those 375,000 people first before we free people in other countries that we don't have jurisdiction over? I don't get that. If I was in jail right now for possession of an ounce of weed, I would be furious. If I was in jail for any possession, I'd be furious that they are saying that this woman is valuable more than me because she can shoot a basketball, because she was born seven feet. Where is the equality there? Where is the, like, how is that just? What do you think? I mean, I just, I got to say that um, I did not expect you to be taking the Brittany Griner should still be locked up stance. I, <laughs> I don't think she should still be locked up. I think that other people should be freed first. That's the main thing. <laughs> I did not have that one on my bingo card. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously what the Russians did to her was like, it was absurd. Like whether or not she even had the marijuana cartridge, whether who knows whether it was planted, whether she actually had it, you know, God only knows. But I think that it is a little crazy. Like this guy, I've done some reading on this guy there, um, Victor Bout. And yeah, he basically was just an international arms dealer who supplied like every single person in the world. Like that, I mean, it's there's evidence that he was potentially supplying Al Qaeda, like ISIS, the Taliban. He, you know, funneled weapons into Colombia when the FARC rebels were much more pretty active. conclusive. Like he's not a good person. Like I don't know if oh, it's uh, yeah, debatable. No, no, the guy makes a lot of money. He's the merchant of death. Like the name yeah. fits. Like he makes money by selling guns, missiles, bombs, etc. Like that's that that is his jam um so the, the trade does feel a little lopsided especially to your point like i feel like one merchant of death is worth Brittany griner and paul whelan <laughs> or wheeler or whatever his name is That's like, what i would think at, at the very least at the very least like look it's going to be a two for one deal here like but no i think it is i think it is ridiculous um and it's good to see that she'll be coming home um i'm it'll be really interesting to see i think what'll be interesting is to see what sort of reception she gets in like the media treatment because given her current conflict with russia i'm sure she's going to become you know part of like the propaganda war against russia at this point yeah, which like yeah. 
look, let, uh, I'm sure some people might say that's cynical of me to say, but like that's exactly what it will be. It's going to be she's going to be part of a propaganda war against Russia to make people continue to hate Russia, you know, as much as as much as possible. But yeah, I don't I don't know. Just this this whole thing, the whole case was wild. Like, look, if if you're an American, like I hopefully at least people know now, like if you're an American, you should not be traveling to Russia. If you're an yeah. American, you should not be. You should you know, not be traveling. Still, to certain countries. There's still WNBA players who are playing there because they need to make more money because they don't get paid in enough in America, even though they get paid in the top ten percent of like all people. Um, <laughs> like that's that's what's so. That's like I don't know. All of this is just crazy to me that people can really say things like this. Like what? I mean, honestly, like I wish the government would basically come out and say. We will assist all Americans in Russia to leave in the next month if you can't afford to get out. But after that, if anything happens to you, you're on your own. Yeah, like, we're not we're not bailing you out. We're not prisoner swapping you. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how rich you are. How you know? It's like you're done. You I think that chance. time has already yeah. kind of passed, though. It's been almost a year. It's like, what do you need? And you see in the news, if you watch the news, it's not good to be there. Like, what makes you think it's okay for you? It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> No, I know, but I, all I'm saying is I think the government should be explicit to be like, if you don't get out, we will not get you out. Yeah, there after will be this no Britney Yeah, yeah it's after, like, after. Yeah. like if, if you don't understand that staying there is dangerous to your freedom and safety, it's on you now. Like, right. <laughs> you're on your own. Yes, so, after this too, it's like, hey, yeah. we got her home. It's not happening again, so don't expect it. Don't, like, uh, it's a one-time thing. I don't know, we'll see, yeah. but... Still crazy, I guess, too. It's not really over yet. There's still plenty that can, I think, happen. Like, it's not like she's actually in American soil yet. So who knows if Russia backs out of the deal? Who knows if she, uh, what shape she's in? Like, it'll be interesting to see if she's been tortured or if she looks, like, completely fine. Um, I think there's still, like, a lot of questions to answer with it. But overall, just came out 20 minutes ago. Again, I'm going to reiterate because you, I don't think, understood it. I'm more or less happy that she's free. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone should be in jail for nonviolent offender offenses. I do think, though, that there should be uh, an order. And I think people who have been in jail longer for dumb rules and people who have been in jail for even dumber rules should be let out first. Um, I just I really don't like that athletes time and time and time again get put on this pedestal and they're allowed to break rules, and they're allowed to say dumb shit, and they're allowed to do all this stuff just because they're athletic. Like, uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. So good for you, Brittany. I wish that I was seven feet and had athletic ability, so people excused my mistakes too. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have um, that benefit. What do you got for us, Todd? Oh, I want to talk about Mr. Musk, Twitter, and the Twitter files. Were you following that as they were uh, coming out? Uh, hell yeah. I, I feel like Twitter has eight stories a week to talk about that I can't remember sometimes which we touch upon and which we don't, because um, it's literally a story a day. So I, I wasn't sure if we yeah. did that. The, the Hunter Biden one specifically? Yeah, just the the, the files that were released to uh, Matt Taibbi, who then did like, like a 36 tweet tweet thread in the most like annoying way to release news ever yeah. um but the thing i really <laughs> want to focus on or that is more interesting is everyone like basically everyone in sort of the media and sort of like the corporate press or mainstream media or whatever buzzword you want to use for them are basically hand waving it away and being like this is not a big deal there's nothing to see here like the hunter laptop was like i'm not sure and the, the funniest thing now it's everything about the hunter laptop everyone's focusing on like why did you want to see hunter's dick so bad why do you want to like humiliate this guy? Why why do you why do Republicans and and people care so much about putting Hunter's dick pics online? It's like no one gives a shit about his dick pics. People care about the emails talking about 10% for the big guy and his obviously corrupt dealings with Ukraine, Russia, China, all these other places that possibly involved Joe Biden or other Biden family members. No one cares, but like this is the the narrative they're spinning. It's like, oh, these weird republicans and these weird people who just want to see hunter biden's dick splashed across the internet it's like no i don't know like we don't need to talk about that like hunter biden's obviously a garbage fire like his life is completely out of whack but it's like there is legitimate things that have come from that laptop that have confirmed to be real that is basically people are just like 
no, there's nothing to see here. It's and it's just it's absolutely ridiculous. Like, and it's it's just really disappointing to see that like this is the level that this is where we're at, where people even that support Biden can look at this and be like, yeah, that there could be something there. Like this seems weird and it should be looked at. Yeah, I think too, um, about this, but a little bit of um a tangent, I think, is like uh and I also think I'm probably in a good place to to say this because as far as um, I think I'm a little bit in the middle, I don't think I'm too far left, too far right or anything like that. But it's interesting to see people kind of have the same arguments on both ends of the spectrum, just about different things, because I am seeing the argument of, oh, but Twitter is a private company. They're allowed to uh, censor as they like. And here's the thing. I uh, and. It's also, I got like too many thoughts in my head right now. I hope they all come out the right way. It's important to kind of like be aware and research and have knowledge of what you're talking about. Because more and more, I realize on a surface level, things seem a certain way. But if you actually like dig in or are knowledgeable about it, it's not always uh, like that. So what I'm getting at kind of is like, I agree private companies are allowed to do whatever they want and censor whatever they want. Um, and because we've seen that argument over the last five, 10 years play out in other places. For example, should I think it's playing out right now and it's actually going to the Supreme Court of um, a company doing work for a gay couple. I think it happened like five years ago with the wedding cake. Did they want to make a wedding cake for a gay couple? Now there's like a social media something for a gay couple, whatever private companies should probably be allowed to do whatever they want and have choice. Here's where though, I think it gets a little bit complex and a little sticky and it might not be so straightforward of a private company doing whatever they want is there's government officials messaging them, telling them what to do. So it's like, that's where I think personally it gets a little sticky is like, it would be okay if Twitter said, we're blocking this account, we're blocking this account, we're doing this, we're a left-leaning um, website. That's fine because they have parlor, the opposite. The parlor saying we're a right leaning website. We're doing whatever we want. That's fine. <coughs> when the government starts meddling and the government starts getting involved and the government has a one way or a back door right to the head of security and can say, hey, I don't like this account. And then a day later, that account's taken down. They're kind yeah. of allowed to do that because, again, it's Twitter's discretion. But that's where I think it gets a little bit weird of like, hey, I'm cool with censorship. Fucking take Hunter's uh, story down. That's fine. But did you do it because you wanted it down or did you do it because so-and-so wanted it? And that's where I think it gets a little bit uh, not so good. Look, and, and I completely agree because everyone's like, well, it's a private company. They just did it on their own. And it's like, look, this is the equivalent of how the mafia used to collect protection money. You know, they walk into your store and it's like, Oh hey, you got a you got an awful nice story here. It'd be a shame if anything happened to it. You know, yep. it could be arranged that you know nothing will ever happen to your business. You just need a couple, you know, hundred bucks a week. Everything will be fine. It's the exactly. same thing with the company. It's like because look, social media for years has basically been under constant threat by the government being like, we're going to regulate you. We're going to pass some sort of thing. And it's yep. like if people don't think that the that there's implicit like pressure and threats by the government basically being like hey it'd be really great if you did these things and just as a reminder you know we can completely change the Destroy way you, you whatever you want business. Yep. yes like exactly so just those, those two things are totally unrelated but just as a reminder it'd be great if these things got taken offline that would be awesome it reminds yeah. me a little bit it reminds me a little bit of football uh or like sports in general kind of where like um, and I, I kind of think sports are fixed, at least sometimes, where in a football play, there's over 10 infractions uh, on any given play. It's a matter okay. of if the referee sees it or not, and if it's worth like calling or not. But they can kind of call a flag or a pen penalty literally whenever they want. I feel yeah. like the same thing with kind of companies and with the government. The government can kind of say you're doing something illegal whenever they want. There's so many rules that you're probably breaking something illegal. It might not be a big deal, but whether it's, did you file correctly? Uh, AOC might've done something like with the ethics board yesterday. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure it's probably a nothing burger. It's probably like they're picking on her because of some small thing 
that she didn't file correctly. They can kind of get you whenever they want. So to your point, when they talk to Twitter and say, hey, we really think you should take this account down, Twitter probably, in my opinion, knows, okay, if we don't do that, uh, the government is going to say we did this filing wrong, we did this filing wrong, and we're actually not allowed to do this, which is a gray area that we've kind of been taking advantage of. Then all of a sudden, Twitter loses a lot of value, and boom. So it's like, uh, again, to your point, it's not them implicitly saying you must do this or else, but it's the government. They're as powerful as they as a organization can be. You kind of know that that's the case when they come and talk to you. So um, it is pretty wild. What do you think is going to come out? Uh, do you think there's more from the Twitter files? I saw something that there might be more files that should come out completely uncensored because they were a little censored. Um, do you think anything will come out? Um, yeah, what do you think could come out from this? I think there's going to be more coming out. And it's actually interesting because there, you know, there was supposed to be like the day two of the Twitter files and then it was delayed and it turned out the reason was because a former FBI official was the lawyer for Twitter who unknowingly to Elon was pre-screening materials before passing them to Taibi. And basically the thought is that he was filtering things out that might have reflected negatively on the government. So now they're having to sort of, they fired that guy and now they're doubling back, I think, to, to sort of see what's out wow. there. But look, I think the, the unfortunate thing is that it's, this story is going to be, no matter what comes out, unless it was literally like the most egregious, most obvious thing where it's like the government officials are like, if you don't take this down, there will be congressional hearings or something along those lines that people on the left are going to hand wave it away and people on the right are going to consider it to be like this massive revelation that shows government corruption. And so it's like, I just, I wish people would be able to look at things without outside of a partisan lens and be like, you know what, even though I disagree with these people, they have a point, or even though I agree with these people, they shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. um, so, right. but, but yeah, no, I, I think Barry Weiss is going to be the second journalist who's going to be releasing um, these files. And I think it'll be interesting to see what happens. And also Elon seemed to imply that at some point they're going to make just everything available for public review and consumption um as like a searchable archive it'll be really interesting to see if he follows through on that um but yeah no i think it's gonna be i don't think it's gonna be good i think we're gonna see a lot of nonsense and unfortunately i think some people are gonna think it's you know terrible other people are gonna think it's a nothing burger um but i think that you know, it's it is just also just funny to see. You remember remember how uh, Twitter was supposed to collapse like two weeks ago? Like yeah. how everyone said it's like this place is obviously going to break down. They needed all these uh, they needed all these these people that they let go, and it's like, well, I guess maybe they don't, didn't need all this staff that they let go. Turns well, out I, you don't necessarily need all these people. I heard um I heard a couple good theories uh, on it, and I, I'm anxious to see what's going to happen. Eventually, we'll find out, but. Did you hear they um they hired this um like genius hacker to fix the search bar? No. This kid like hacked iPhones when he was 13 years old was <laughs> uh, when literally the government couldn't hack iPhones. Like this kid's a prodigy and basically said he's down to do work for free for the next 3 months for Elon to fix the Twitter search. That's like his big goal. Here's though my kind of theory. I think that that's a cover up and I think they're actually rebuilding Twitter from the ground up. And something I kind of saw, I'm not making this all up, is basically this guy said that Twitter is not the most complex thing. You could build a new Twitter from the ground up in about three to four months. So what this guy kind of posited was, hey, they're just giving you the old version of Twitter and they're basically not adding anything to it. They're not maintaining it. They're just letting it go. And eventually it probably will like break or they won't be able to maintain any longer. But when's that going to be? In about three months, four months. And what's going to happen? They're going to overnight just switch the entire thing. It's going to be on a completely different like framework, whatever. You're going to have the same profile, the same password, and all your history of tweets will be there. But everything else will work differently and we'll just be on a new Twitter moving forward. And part of me thinks that makes a lot of sense of like, oh, because uh, part of the reason they said that was they're not really doing any changes right now. You're not really seeing any like functionality or new functions or fixing of some errors. Like 
it's still functioning well, but you're not seeing too many changes. And he's saying like, oh, all of their effort is going on back behind the scenes and that in a few months we'll really see um, the changes. And I, I kind of believe that. Um, and it is, it's running perfectly well right now. I've been on it more the last two weeks than the last, uh, than previously without a doubt. Well, it's just been hilarious to watch. Like Twitter has been just so great because it's all these people just like, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just so funny. Um, watching everyone just like run around with their hair on fire, just acting like this is the end of the world. It's like, it might be though. It might be. But, but yeah, no, I think it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see how all of this goes. And, uh, yo, before we leave, one of the random thing you, uh, you see your favorite Congresswoman is, uh, getting investigated for an ethics complaint. I, I mentioned that when I was talking before, it's, it's probably going to oh, be about, right. yeah. it's probably going to be about, um, the dress or when she wore the dress to the Met Gala, like her receiving the funds and not like filing it. So again, probably nothing burger, but. They can get you whenever they get. The government would get me for that, so they might as well get her for that too, <laughs> right? Yes, it, it will be. Uh, it will be interesting uh, to see, but especially now the Republicans. Yeah, they, they're saying it's because she was gifted the thirty-five thousand dollar Met Gala tickets um, and didn't like declare them or report them, and then also that the, related to the designer dress she wore with tax the rich on it. That was just such a such an amazing act of bravery on her part. Yeah. Uh, you know, to wear it to wear it to the uh the, the room full of rich people. Um but yeah, so but yeah, man, I don't know. It's um I just um, the thing I'm consistently left with is just like I wish we had better politicians and better leaders and better media and people that were like just could at least understand and empathize with both sides just because what we're doing now of acting like the other side is just like raving lunatics or Nazis is not helpful for anyone. Yeah, no, I agree. At least we didn't get Herschel Walker though. Oh, geez. That guy is just so dumb. And <laughs> dude, dude, that was crazy. Well, look, the one good thing about Herschel Walker losing <laughs> is that, it, you know, it's again, it's firmly showing that Trump is not this kingmaker, that Trump's word and endorsement doesn't mean much. And if anything leads to candidates losing easily winnable races, yeah. like if the Republicans had run anyone who was <laughs> slightly just normal they would have walked away with it because Brian Kemp would have carried anyone across the line since he won by so much in uh, you know in the governor race. So it's it is absolutely just crazy. And hopefully the Republicans learn from this and start looking to people that are actually intelligent people with maybe some more moderate politics, but at the same time are gonna, you know, be different from the Democrats. So I don't know. We'll see. But yep, time shall tell. It's gonna it's going to be a rocky way to get there, whatever it is. Yes. No, it's not going to be good. Well, I hope you had a good week. That's the week you missed. We'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>